Hello, and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Friday, the 25th of November. My name is Rachel Parker. My pronouns are she and her. I am an Anglican priest from the Anglican Church of Canada, the Diocese of Edmonton, and I am the rector or the priest for Dayspring Ministries, which is a a culmination of three congregations, St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Thomas and Wainwright, St. Saviour's in Vermilion, in um, the southeastern part of Alberta in Canada. Glad to see you. For those of you who have been hanging out with me for a while, you know I am a like huge fan of Bo of the Fifth Column. And I think it was Wednesday he had uh, a video about Trump and evangelicals. And I have watched that several times. Um, Bo doesn't usually chime in on church. <laughs> so it was absolutely incredible to see him and hear what he had to say. And it really was ringing true because uh, in Canada, uh, we have pockets where the church really does sort of influence the congregation in, in that sort of more Southern Baptist or Southern evangelical style from the States where the pastor, or the, the, the clergy person sort of um, would tell the people how they have to vote and things like that. Not so much, I think, in Canada as maybe in some parts of the States, but, but it really struck home about um, the evangelicals sort of turning on Trump. But more so what he, what Bo talked about and really fired me up was this idea of, of people leaving the church. Um, and I don't think that we could say in Canada that people have been leaving the church because of politics. We've been watching people leaving the church for a long time. And a great part of, of what I, I think that Bo nails right on the head is the problem is not necessarily um, the mission of the church or the purpose of the church in Canada or anywhere at that for that matter. But I think it's a, it really, he, as he said it toward the end of his video, I think a real problem is church leadership and a failing leadership, which leads to a, f- a failing to a decline in numbers in churches. I think we as as churches, um, we as Christians, as certainly as an Anglican, as Anglicans, um, did a disservice by getting shy about what our core mission is. I think that for a long time, I mean, I've, I've, I'm a, what they call a cradle Anglican. I grew up, I didn't know any other church in my teenage years. I sort of explored a little bit, went a couple of times to a Roman Catholic church, a couple of times to a more um, free or Pentecostal style church, checked out Lutheran once or twice with a friend. But for the most part, I'm Anglican to the core and I am an Anglican priest. So that works out okay. <laughs> but one thing I noticed through the years was the that I'm going to speak for my churches anyway, the churches I was involved in as a student as or as a as a parishioner and then as a student um, as a seminarian and then as the priest unfortunately I have to admit this is that we really did fail in our church leadership we failed in acknowledging and sticking to the the main thing if you the main thing about being a, a uh, being an organization if you are in an organization or if you if, if you run a business for instance it's really important that you know what it is that you're that you stand up for. Whether you're a business that is selling, like you sell something, you need to know your product. You have to believe in your product. If you are a service club or a service group, you have to know who you who you are trying to serve and how you're trying to serve them, and make sure you do so well. Well, in the church, um, at least for me as an Anglican, my core mission. My core mission must be always, first and foremost, to speak of the core mission of the church, and that is Jesus Christ, to speak the gospel, to be able to speak without fear, without trembling, without hesitation, the good news that of Jesus Christ, the good news that, that, that God loved us so much, God loved humanity so much, all of us, regardless of race, creed, um, religion, um, gender identity, sexual orientation, um, anything like that. God loved us so much that God allowed part of God's self in Jesus to come and be among us, to live like us. Not that God, I think, needed to understand what that was like, but that we would understand that God knew what that was like, that Jesus got it. He, he walked the walk. He talked the talk. He understood what it was to be like us. And 
that means that we have, when we talk to someone, when we pray to Jesus, we have someone that we can relate to, that we can, that we can talk to, that we know understands us. And then we go on further to talk about the good news that Jesus died for our sins. And that's a whole other, a whole other topic that I am still, I've been ordained 23 years, still struggling to really fully understand that, how that works. Um, Sometimes I just have to accept things to be true and then work myself through the knowledge of acceptance at the, like through time. So I confess, I, I, it's not so much a doubt is an, I, I don't know thing, but Jesus died for our sins. He was raised from the dead and he went, you know, and, but one of the things he said to his disciples or the apostles after he rose from the dead, before he ascended to heaven was said, go out and, and baptize nations. Now I don't, I don't think that means that we are called to go out and convert everybody. I really don't. I think that means we're supposed to go out and talk about our faith. We're supposed to go out and live our faith with integrity. That when people see us and we and they say, okay, that person's a Christian, they go to church, that when they see us and they, they know that, they connect the dots that Rachel's a Christian, she goes to a church, um, the church must be the place where she lives out her Christianity or learns about it. So, you know, all of those things have to be in harmony. They all have to have integrity. And and I think that for a very long time, the Anglican church, or at least the Anglican churches I was in, really watered that down. We didn't want to tell other people about our faith. I don't know why. I mean, there's no, there's no, no, nothing that says you must be absolutely articulate and have everything all tied together before you can share your faith. I think that's the kind of faith when I've heard people tell me about their faith experience or their faith life, and there are no loose ends, that's when I wonder about their integrity. That's when I wonder about their ability to be a leader in the church. Because if they've got it all figured out, in my mind, they don't really have it all figured out. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to best admit, when it comes to my faith, I am a hot mess. I don't have all the answers. I have a lot of hopes and I have a lot of ideas and I have some some inklings and I have some research that I've done and I've had some experiences that have, have said to me, no, I don't think that was right, but this feels this feels more in tune with what I believe God is saying to me. Um, but I don't have it all tied up in a nice little gift with a tight bow. As a matter of fact, if you've ever seen me wrap a Christmas present, you'll know. Yeah, it's just a hot mess. And I use a mile of tape. And that's sort of how my my faith life is. It's a mile of tape holding it together um, because I can't get it all nice and neat. And that's okay. And I think that for a lot of years in the church, we were so worried about what we looked like or worried about whether or not there were people in the pews that we forgot that the reason they were in the pews in the first place was because we were sharing good news with them. We were sharing the core mission, as as Bo talked about, the core mission was the gospel. This idea that we go out into the world to be the hands and feet of Christ. And what we know of Jesus, regardless of what we think about his death on the cross, his resurrection and ascension and all of those things, what we know of Jesus from the Bible is that he did not go out and play politics. He did not go out and condemn everybody. He went out and he healed people. When people came to him and said, you know, heal my daughter, he didn't give them a checklist and say, if you do this and you contribute to this group and you have, you know, you've gone to church every day for the last six months and you've done all these things, then I'll hear your daughter, you'll heal your daughter. As a matter of fact, he didn't even ask them if they believed he could heal them or their daughter. He simply said, either he did it, he healed them, or he said, go, your child is well. So many times we see that it's in the walking that the understanding and the recognition of healing happened. That when Jesus said, go, like, don't stay here, go and be with your child or you're sick, you can't walk, stand up and pick up your mat. He didn't do something, you know, hocus pocus. He didn't only once I'm aware of. Did he actually have to physically, you know, he had to clean the clear the guy's eyes. He had to spit on his hands and put mud on them. And, you know, is it clear now? But 99 times of 100, Jesus just said, you're healed. Pick it up and go. And then it became up to the person. 
to believe that and to go forward. And it seems to me like sometimes, and myself, I am the biggest, biggest failure in this, is in church leadership, is that we, the leaders, don't always seem to actually believe what it is uh, in the, the core mission is, that we struggle. And I don't think it's that the leadership needs to say that we absolutely have it all together 100% of the time. I think what it is, is that we need to point to the one who does. We believe that Jesus has it together 100% of the time. We don't. And that by admitting that we're a hot mess, admitting that we don't have all the answers, that we doubt, that we kind of question things, that's when we can actually relate to those people who are still in our pews. And it's when we lie to them or when we say to them, go and do these things because, you know, I can, or this is what the church says, you need to go do these things. But they don't see the church doing that. That failure in leadership, I think, is what has driven people out of the pews. And until the world and society around us sees that our integrity and our dignity and our, more importantly, the dignity that we see and respect in other people as church leaders, until people can see that and that they can see that we aren't up there lying or that we're not up there faking it till we make it, but we're simply being ourselves and doing our best to say we're in this together. We're in this because we believe that Jesus came down to be with us and figure out this human condition as well. Because he's done it, we have an example of how to do it. But the church leaders... We're just as messed up as the people who come to the church looking for that leadership. And we need to acknowledge that. And until we can, I think Bo's right. We will see, we will continue to see people leaving the church, leaving religious institutions, as long as we are putting our focus on the wrong things. And our focus needs to be on what it is we believe in. In the Christian church, our focus needs to be in Jesus Christ. If I was Muslim, my focus would need to be on Allah. If I was Jewish, my focus would need to be on the law and all of those things that are taught in synagogue and temple. When we can harmonize or bring into line what it is we believe in and what we say we believe in and how we live our belief, then we might be able to really say to people, come back and check us out and let's see if we can't figure this out together. I don't think the church is going to die. I don't think any religious institution is going to die. But I do think there is time for a new breath of life to come into it. One that is filled with harmony and integrity and real honest to God leadership that recognizes that God and in the Christian church, Jesus are the ones who we worship, not the priests, not the pastors, not the, 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 you know, the youth leaders. It's not about charisma. It's not about politics. It's not about who can do what for whom, but it's very much about recognizing that we need to work together that we need to love one another, respect one another. And when we can do that, then we can really begin to work on the core mission of the church, which is to live out the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, which will automatically include reaching out to those who are different than we are, bringing health and healing to those who need it, like mental health and physical health, and ensuring that those things are available for every single person things like that. When we get there, when we get to the point where our integrity and what we say we believe in looks like who we are as we, as we live at our belief, then we'll have a shot at bringing back those people into our pews, if that indeed is what we're supposed to do. So that's a topic for another day, whether or not we should be building up the churches themselves or sending people out of the churches to build up the world. So maybe next week. But thank you to Bo for such a great video and for reminding me of what I'm here to do. Have a great weekend. God bless you. And I will see you on Sunday for Gospel on the Go or Monday for Church at Home with Rachel.